It is Tuesday, September 13th, 2016. This is Room in the Trees, a podcast about creative living, about painting and making, and about creative conversation. The following was recorded on Thursday, September 8th, 2016. This is special episode number 20, The House of Lloyd. Room in the Trees is hosted by Sabrina Harrison and me, Trent Reynolds. Show notes including pictures, links, video, and more for every episode can be found at roominthetrees.com. If you are enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to rate us on iTunes, which you can get to by going to roominthetrees.com backslash iTunes. And if you just cannot wait to show monetary support, you can do so uh, by becoming our patron at patreon.com backslash room. And by doing so, you will get special additional content from time to time. We really appreciate all your support, and we're grateful that you are listening. Today, for our special 20th episode, we are joined by artist and teacher David Lloyd. You can see his art at thehouseofloyd.com. And it turned out he was the perfect guest for this episode. And I came away from the conversation feeling that I had learned a lot and that many of the discussions we've been having uh, were resolved nicely in this conversation. I think you'll enjoy it. Here is David Lloyd. Okay, you ready to go? I am. Well, this is... Let me introduce you to David Lloyd. I met David Lloyd through um, Craigslist, right? Craigslist. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, that's how it all begins. Yes. So I put out an uh, I just put out an ad on Craigslist saying that uh, you know I had this space and uh, if anybody was interested in using it or renting it, um, and he responded to that ad and that's kind of. All what there is was, to it. So what was the what were you kind of putting out there? You wanted to have share the space. Yeah. So uh, the original intent of getting the space is that I wouldn't just be here by myself, but that you know I'd invite other other people in to use it as a studio space and a place to teach workshops. So I guess I was a little bit wary about putting just a general ad up on Craigslist because I, I had no idea right. who would well, show up. Yeah, you don't right? know who you're going to end up showing. Yeah. Shows up. But it's it's been kind of remarkable how great the people are that show up like right. i haven't had anybody show up that i you know thought was that i wouldn't want around right, right. anyway you walked in though and he's like yeah immediately it, it felt like fit. yeah yeah. Yep. yeah the space is really nice and it's uh it's easy easy access it's it, everything about it works um i keep it to a small group um right. You could certainly make more money getting more people in here, but I think it just works better if you don't overload it. Right. People, besides when I teach, people tend to spread out. I'm kind of messy. Yeah. And there, yeah. you've noticed that probably when you come <laughs> after I've been here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Which is great. I well, great. yeah. I've I've got this one gal using a drop cloth now, so your floors aren't completely screwed. But, is she the one that does? No, I'm not. Yeah, that, over in the corner. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. so you got to see the. I wish you could see the floor. Maybe I'll take a picture for the show notes. But well, but it's perfect. It's pretty, pretty much the same color all around, except for one corner's got this like splattering of white. I, I've been trying to keep it, with, keep it uh, cool. My floor in my studio is just beyond. Oh, it, I mean, it just uh, yeah. But you, um, you're teaching workshops currently, right? Over at Brentwood yeah, Art I teach Center. at this little school, Brentwood Art Center, and I teach oh. abstract painting. But it's not. Um, it's really not very rigid about that. Like people come in and they want to um, work in other areas, you know, add collage, add imagery, use other materials. I'm, I kind of encourage that, even though I don't think most people really coming in, a lot of people don't even know what abstract painting is because right. it really is the absence of subject, you know. Right. It's, it's all the stuff of painting without actual subjects things to see so if they paint a chicken i'm cool with that but 
they start going in a new direction, I tend to kind of go with it because sometimes that produces interesting results. Um, mm. But if somebody is really interested in doing pure abstraction, that is a separate thing. It really is. And abstract painters are touchy about that. Right. Because... I want to I want to get into that. And mm -hmm. in, in abstraction, I think, is a... Well, that's... A, definitely something that I'd like to talk about with you specifically. Before we get to that, though, uh, give us a little bit of background. Where are you, where are you come from? I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, I lived in a number of different areas after that, but my I grew up as a kid in Los Angeles, and what my part? dad was born. What part? West L.A., uh, Mar Vista. And my dad was born in Los Angeles, and his dad was born in Los wow. Angeles. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And my cousin went out with one of the Beach Boys. So there you go. Pretty it's cool. L.A. Claim, all the, the way. Yeah. My dad yeah. was a surfer. Yeah. So it's uh, and I and I moved up north. My family moved up north uh, when I was a little older, and I went to high school up there. And then I came back down and went to Cal Arts. Where up north in in California? Oh, I, the Monterey Bay area. We my parents moved to Carmel. California before it was sort of hip and groovy and mm -hmm. looked like a Ralph Lauren ad. It totally, was like totally. full of burnouts and bohemians and artists. It was unbelievably cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I got to live up there in the 70s. Oh, wow. that's such real, a gift. <laughs> it was. It was amazing. Yeah. And um, But I knew that, you know, the the people say to you oh well you know carmel's an art town well it's really it's, it's like saying now, um, now. <laughs> yeah it's like a it's like a tourist art town yeah. it's not a it's not new york or chicago or or when you were growing up though was it more of like a are you talking about i think was there was a more place? experimental art scene there mm -hmm. and i think that was sort of pushed out in favor of very very commercial sort of laguna beach kind of stuff and uh mm -hmm. it just had to happen the prices of everything went up you know it was just a uh the way of of a lot of it's sort of like what's happened to places like aspen and and not that they can't there's not still good artists up there i just think it, it for a for a a kind of a serious art career it would not be my first choice and you know what let's just take a moment for how frustrating it is but like i i used to live on the central coast in bonnie dune which is just a bit north of santa cruz Sure. And I lived in this old one-room schoolhouse, and I loved it. But the guy bought the place in, I guess, the 60s for, like, 5000 bucks. So you right. could be an artist back then and, you know, live and have these interesting spaces and in amazing spots. But it's just... You can't do you can't that do now. That Even so no, no way. The lifestyle of an artist is completely, completely unrealistic for the most part. I mean, right. there's... If you look at it, if you watch a show about uh, on made on TV, a mainstream TV about an artist, they're living in a loft in like like Soho that oh. would cost thirty five million dollars right now, oh, and it's just completely unrealistic. I mean, right. most artists really, really, really struggle, yeah. and in, uh, only the the very, you know, the very very top one half of one percent can really make a a, a really f profound living and then there's artists who make an okay living but most artists really you know year to year you're working it you know it's yeah. very hard but um where you lived up in bonnie dune i i used to live in santa cruz and oh yeah that that oh. area now would be that little farmhouse would be a whole lot of money i surfed uh, all that area between that and half moon bay yeah the cliffs there and just that time mm -hmm. i've talked about this a lot mm -hmm. on the podcast i mean just that and there wasn't re cell phone reception up there, so it just really, you know, you just had Davenport to go to. Right, Davenport. Paco and just... Land, land of the great white shark. So. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I surfed Davenport. A friend of a guy I know got, got bit there. That oh was beautiful up there, though. Oh. But it's a wild west. That's the beauty of it. It is. Hmm. Anyway, that's a whole other subject, the sharks in, <laughs> of northern California. But... Um, Man, that freaks me right out. Even just you, you just saying that, like oh, it does. Being in, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why are you doing that? Why, why, why <laughs> yeah. would you the ever do that? The people like. Yeah, and you know, like, I don't you know like. He's out there. I don't like to fly. Mm. And and think about that as an artist. Right. You know, I'm I'm going to be in a really good art fair in Miami, 
in a month or, in, or two during the Basel Art Week in Miami, and I have to fly out there. I don't look forward to it, but I do it. Right, if you have to. But I hate it. Right. Sharks, no problem. Flying, yeah. yeah. Have you so ever seen one when you're in the water? water so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I could totally go. This whole podcast could be about being chased around by sharks, but yeah, that's a whole no, other. Yeah, I don't want to do Yeah, that. we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> that messes We'll do that at a time. We'll do the shark the shark one. People love that. Anyway. Before we get into I got I to gotta ask you because uh, I'm going to forget if, if I don't. Um, your boob tattoo. Is oh, boob yeah, tattoo? yeah. I've got the... Oh, that's gone. That was a fake tattoo. That was a fake tattoo? Yeah, yeah. I went to a breast cancer awareness art show, and they were handing out <laughs> boob tattoos. You thought that was real, dude? I totally oh, thought it was real. What kind of person would put the boob tattoo on themselves permanently? That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, no, no, no. That well, was, you, they were giving, had it. they were putting out on, on fake, <laughs> uh, fake tattoos. <laughs> That were that were just those rub on things, and they were right. and there was a book, and it was this whole kind of art show that was that I was in that was a benefit well, breast cancer. And it was on there for a while though, wasn't it? I wouldn't come off, and everywhere I went, people would give me this look, and I felt like going. In fact, the lady in line at the market, I just she was looking at me, and I said, "It's fake. I I don't have to tell you, you know." Oh, that is too funny. Yeah, no, the boob. Because but, I, I took a picture of you for the, you know, just for my and website. And there's a boob tattoo and, there. And it's just you got big old smile on your face, and there's this boob tattoo that's probably displayed. I didn't even notice that. That might be out. the reason I don't have as many students. <laughs> Maybe it's because I didn't have more. I have this one. This is yeah. a real tattoo, though. That's the the bug tattoo. And what is what kind of? Well, it's a it? it's a scarab, that um that is. Uh, got like a rainbow colors on it and it's funny because it looks like a gay pride scarab which didn't occur to me right and yeah. i have no problem with that but it's kind of funny it's like a, it's just i just made it for the hell of it cool anyway cool you bet. well that is too funny I, I had no idea well for those that are listening i'll uh, i'll see if i can find i'm sure i got a picture of it because yeah so I, it wasn't it was not i forgot it was on there and everywhere i went people were like wow did you did you draw that or somebody like did was that your because design? it's not i mean we're talking about boob tattoos it was not idealized no you know? it was just like a it was like a, <laughs> a a rounded out w with two dots at the end of both of them yeah right so how yeah. many people did, did how many people do you think got that same tattoo temporarily a lot <laughs> but you know it's a big city that's a great you know? project in itself just thinking about all the people like hashtag awkward boob tattoo but the and the thing was too is that <laughs> everybody was complaining that it didn't stay on Right. Except and, for you, and a mine would not go, come off, and it literally was on there for like four months. Oh my this gosh. thing, and it, it's something to do with my skin. I, I surf a lot, so I'm tan, and maybe my skin it just stuck, it stayed on anyway. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. I had no, yeah, I had no idea. I'm just like, no, I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. Like, well, it's funny because she's just, she's cool with that you know, like right there on the prominently displayed on your arm. And there's like, maybe, the, I, maybe I should have just. Maybe I should just no. get something no. like that. No, she <laughs> says the woman says no. no. Don't do it. Yeah, I, it was it was I was trying to be supportive. Oh no, yeah, that's awesome. That is a fantastic story. Okay, uh, so last week uh, we talked about in this podcast we talked about um, just voices in your head, negative mm -hmm. voices that keep you from making work or that make you self conscious or make it hard for. Well, for Prozac has helped that. Prozac has helped that yeah, therapy. The voices and... in my head and the long, many, many years of therapy, and they're better now. No, but um, yeah, I think that uh, being an artist for me, I don't know if I can speak for everybody, is like a 24 hour a day job because if I'm not making it, I'm thinking about oh. it and seeing things and sort of coming, just, you know, I see stuff in the world that makes me think of something. I see a I see the uh, the side of a. I saw a building that had a hot pink wall, uh -huh. and I was like, I want to make a bunch of pink paintings. You know what I mean? It's just sort of like it filters in. So there's a constant stream, and uh, my wife tells me I'm always thinking about art. So there's not a lot of room for other stuff, you know? Right. Which is kind of true, I think. I think mm -hmm. there's a kind of constant, um, and the voices in your head that are critical or positive 
that is that to me it comes and goes. Um, I, when I when I meet you, when I or when I talk to you, when you seem like a person that wouldn't have any voice. Like you, you've got this confidence, you got this kind of easygoing. Like I, I've you, had a what, lot. No, that yeah, I've had a lot of voices. I've I've done in the last few years. I okay, so it's kind of interesting. I I had a very very successful career early out of school. I came out of school and 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 went into a gallery in L.A. which in L.A. arts the L.A. art scene wasn't that big, but I went into a gallery in L.A. that at that time would be comparable to something like Gagosian. It was right. the the gallery. It was called Margot Levin Gallery, and it was it was you know they showed the stars from New York and John Baldessari showed there who and and it was a big deal and I got I think I got success very young and I um, had I decided to change my work pretty radically I went from abstract painting to more figurative stuff mm -hmm. and I my the dealer who I was showing with she she was supportive but I don't think she really knew what to do with it because it wasn't her interest Hmm. And she was more interested, the gallery was becoming more conceptual. And I was moving toward a different kind of painting. And I think we just went in different directions and I finally left the gallery. And then I had, a, this kind of comes back to what we're talking about. Then I had a show at another gallery about two years later after being in this major gallery, I showed with this other gallery, which was a pretty good gallery. It wasn't the same stature. And I did a show, a very large, sort of strange, surrealistic, um, had a lot of figurative elements, had a lot of weird things, and a and a a very prominent critic in LA just ripped me a new you know what. Mm. Huh. And he had been a, a champion of mine. He didn't like what I was doing. Right. And it threw me so completely that I think I didn't really make any art for a couple of years, which is really embarrassing to think because I should have just said, screw you, you know? Right. What do I, who cares, right? But the truth was is I didn't have the, the intestinal fortitude to kind of get through it. And I was younger and it, and it, and so, and I think that what's happened since then, it's a long time, I didn't make art for a while and then I started making art again and I got back into it. And I think I got to the point where I, I've gotten to the point where I realized that there's just absolutely no way to please everyone or right. even something you just simply have to make what you make right and just stick it in the world and did you after you he you had that reaction from mm -hmm. him did you regret making that work or did you feel no like you i didn't make that in fact anymore? there was another critic who was not as in, probably as important on the la art scene i'm not gonna mention anybody's name of anything but he was like came back and said hey this is a really interesting show mm. and he kind of would praised me for um for kind of going off in a new direction but the truth was is that the it's interesting about criticism uh. i mean people can tell you you're great all day long but one person says eh i'm not sure it's so hot that's right. what you remember right right your right. mother tells you you're, you know, you're smart, but yeah. it doesn't. Well, there's a, there's this interesting thing. There's this interesting thing that I've noticed just teaching uh, younger art students. It's they always say like, "Tell me the truth. Tell me what you really think. Don't you know? Don't coddle me. Don't be nice." And it's almost like they don't, they wouldn't believe you if you told them something. Oh, that's positive, a real problem right? with teaching because I've had people who have actually made some really, whether they was intentional or accidental, some really interesting stuff, and they're like no that sucks right and right. i'm like no it doesn't suck and you should listen to me because i've been doing it for 30 something years you know right what is what is that all about there's like this this innate uh, masochism that we have like uh. we 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 cannot accept or like praise we can't ex whether it's our own like, accepting so, ourselves or accepting somebody else's praise i don't you know? know it's some sort of subjective uh quality of art making you know when you're a a science or math or engineering these are quantifiable yeah, things I think that's why it is the quantifiable element of it and it's such a shame don't you think as you get older and you think i was fine you know <laughs> you think about oh yeah oh, no when, God. That, when that um there was an artist i know in la there's another artist i know in la this woman who is a i think she's an amazing artist and and she had that just a couple of years ago had that same critic 
kind of give her a hard time. Mm -hmm. And she made a big joke out of it and, and said, oh, he took me out behind the woodshed, ha, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And, and what she did was she just totally diffused it and said, right. and it was sort of like a screw him. What do, who, who, what do I care? Right. And she blew through it like it wasn't there, and I looked at and I thought, man, she has got huge, you know what? But that's she's really like, rare, and that's not really natural right. to the human condition. I don't she's, think. I'm just. And she is a very, very, uh, yeah, she's an artist that has a, a very, she has a lot of confidence. But it was interesting how she handled it because she turned mm -hmm. it right back around. She put the review online uh, on Facebook yeah. and said, "Hey, you guys, check right. this out." And, pe and what it did is turned everybody against the critic. Right. Everybody's right. like, "He's an idiot." You know? Oh, I right. love that. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I've learned since then to. Mm -hmm. um, to I, I think it's. I, I am. I'm 60 years old, and I think I. I just don't give a shit anymore mm -hmm. about whether people are going to like it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm in the fourth quarter. Do you, do you feel like, though, that uh, it, is that voice still there? I mean, even if you don't care about it or if, even if it's, hard, it's e easier it, now to it, suppress it, it, is it still around? That? It's still around. Um, it's, it's in, uh, it's, it is still around. Actually, it's interesting. When it comes to art making, um, I'm feeling very confident in the last, you know, five years. I'm mm -hmm. feeling pretty on top of it. But when it comes to teaching, interestingly enough, I've been doing this for about 20 years. I get nervous about teaching. Sure. Really? Yeah. Because I feel like, do I, can I, can I, can I give people, do, do I know what I'm doing? You know, do I, do I know, I know what I'm doing, but do I have the, the stuff to tell them what they're doing right? And it's really kind of weird that way because. Well, talk more about that. What is it that you what What do you feel like it is your What's your responsibility as a teacher? I think it's partly how I teach. I don't teach like um, I went to a school where what they did was they you went in. I went to Cal Arts. You went in. They gave you a um, studio right off the bat. I mean, a closet. It was not very big, but they said, "Here's a studio. Make something." And you're like, "Well, what do I make?" And they're like, "That's not my problem." Make hmm. something. Well, I don't know what to, how to. I don't know oil paint from shit from Shinola, right? Well, <laughs> oh, the again, jerk! That, I love that reference. The jerk. <laughs> and they would show me. They would take me outside and show me a pile of dog crap, and then they'd show me some Shinola and say, "Figure it out." <laughs> right. Right. No, but they, they, that's the thing. And, and so I, I, I just uh, and what you did was you were sort of thrown to the lions and you started figuring things out. And it really produced really interesting results. Mm. It's not the only way to teach. If somebody wants to learn um, very specific skills, uh, there's ways to learn that. They need to seek it out. And some schools are better than others. You know, if you went to a right. place like RISD, I think they have both. I think at a place like RISD, you'd probably have somebody you could teach figure drawing as well as anybody. But then you could take a lot of kind of weird conceptual stuff, too. So I've learned I, I, I learned that way. So most people teach how they were taught. I think that's uh -huh. just natural. You, sure. you know, so I always tell people, you know, take a illustration class, take a figurative class, take a, a paint a color thing, whatever you know learn it all learn any, everything you learn is, is helpful but in but my system is a little different i sort of get people working on something and they go i don't know what i'm doing i'm like that's okay just keep going keep going and we'll see where it goes and then we take that and we start another one and we build off it and as they go along i show them stuff i hmm. say well that if you mix that and that that's going to be like mud so Let's avoid that. And it's, it's, it's like a perfect antidote to somebody who's, and then, they, and then people go, well, should I take a, you know, like a technique class, technique class? I say, yeah, take that too. So I'm trying to make an artist out of them. You know, make, even though I think, because I think there's an artist in everybody, I think that somebody who could be um, never, you know, I've had lawyers that never made, picked up a, pencil or pen or paintbrush in their life who actually make start making interesting stuff so and, they come to your they come to your class and you say well let's get go ahead and get started and they say i don't know what i'm doing I, well and okay so i have ways to get them started 
Absolutely. I mean, I don't just stand there and go, well, don't look at me. I don't, they were, I'm not that bad. No. I get people started by just putting, just putting like a color down of, of just just like a burnt umber or, or, or yellow ochre and just kind of get something on there. And then I, I, with, when we're talking about abstraction, I tell them to create with a, I give them a, take a small brush and a black paint or brown paint, dark brown paint. And I say, I want you to just make marks out of the top of your head. And sort of like you're doodling while you're talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. And most people actually, once they get going, are pretty good. They get stuff going. And I kind of use that as a scaffolding to start building a painting. Mm. And it, from there, I usually can see their sort of nature. Like some people are more, some people are more Picasso and some people are more Rothko, you know? Some right. people are, 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 decoon, are messy and some people are tight. Right. And I do a lot of stuff like that and I just try to get them working. And then as they get going, um, if they're, Stuck. I help them a lot, and some people don't. Every, everybody's so different mm -hmm. that I don't. I mean, sometimes I think you can't really teach art. You can teach around it. You can kind of teach it. You can hint at it, but to make art, there's that aha moment when people make something. They're like, "Shit, that's good. That's pretty good." And I'm like, "Yeah, it is." And that's, but that's a, that's a. a that's a kind of a tough place to get to. Hmm. And in my have, way of doing you... things isn't for everybody because there oh. are people who, who want, they want straight up technical stuff, which hmm. I can give them, which I actually do give them. I just don't give it to them formally. I give it to them informally. Mm -hmm. So I give them a lot of technical information, but I kind of interweave it into what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, right. into the work as it goes along. I say, hey, one way to deal with this would be, you know, X, Y, Z or something like that. Have you ever had somebody really push back on you and say, like, yes. you need to, you're not giving me enough information? Yes, I that. have. And, and I tell them that at this point, I tell them there's other teachers that are better equipped to do that than me. Before, have you always been that way or did it take you a while to get it to that point? It took me a while to get to this point because I've had, I've had a lot of success this way. And I don't mean success as necessarily having a lot of students. I mean success and getting some students that are really good. My thing is, is no teacher can be everything to everybody. Right. There's stuff you know how to do that I don't know how to do. There's mm -hmm. stuff I know how to do that you may not know how to do. And I think, that's, I think that, that sometimes people think that a teacher can be everything to them. Like they can teach them everything there is to know about painting, you know, and you can't. You can, you can, um, Give them what you're, what I'm good at. You know, I, I'm good at certain things, and I can help them with that stuff. But I, I can't. I think it's good to um, take a lot of different kinds of stuff. Mm. And, um, you know, uh, a, did, did you talked you just a little while ago. You talked about um, having voices in your head now about teaching specifically. Well, about right? teaching because it is. Um, it would make my life easier to set up like a still life in the middle of the room and say, we're all going to paint it, you mm -hmm. know, kind of thing. And sometimes with teaching, I sometimes think, well, am I too free flowing? But then what happens is I, I get to the point where I realize that what I'm doing is working for the people I'm doing it with. And so, mm -hmm. And I think that teaching a little bit also is like being a waiter in a weird way. It's like you kind of have to keep people happy at the kind of teaching I'm doing. I, when I taught at, at Art Center in Pasadena, mm -hmm. it was different. I had 18-year-old kids who I'd just say, you know, you have to show up on time. You have to do, you have to finish this work. You have to, if, you know, or, or I'll give you a, a lousy grade. Mm -hmm. And it's more hierarchical. But when you're teaching adults, which I primarily do now, is teach adults. They're here for fun. They're here for to. They're get. They're here to be better artists. But they're also. You're trying to make the experience. 
interesting and kind of pleasurable. It's not like they're not getting graded. That's a really interesting right. distinction, for sure. It is. A, it's a. It's a huge, it's a huge distinction because if you're, yeah. it really is because if you keep it fun and you keep it interesting and you have talks about the world and we talk about politics and. It's fun. Um, Have you found, though, and this is something I, I teach at Emeritus College, and the things, oftentimes the things that I think are going to be best for them for in terms of their progress are stuff that's not necessarily fun to do. You know, so, but I don't, sometimes right. you don't have that leverage of giving grades, of holding, so. You don't. You, you the, the, I, sometimes I feel like I compromise too much on the side of trying to make things more palatable and more entertaining uh, even though i don't i know that there would be other things that would be better uh, for them well that's interesting it's a yeah it's a different it's a different thing if you're teaching a class of beginning design at santa monica college and you're teaching a class in here of beginning painting or something with adults it's two separate things it really yeah. is i mean that it's it's the kids at santa monica city college are you know they're they're getting credit and it's it's more formal and mm -hmm. you know but i i do think it's a it's a hard thing i mean it's um you know there's there's the tenure pro, tenured professors that at the great schools mm -hmm. that like UCLA who work two days a week you know i don't know what they get a, they get $150,000 a year and they go in and they they chat about art and some of them are great at it and some of them aren't you know some are right. Some are probably lazy, and some of them are fantastically good at what they do. I, you know, I, I just think that that they're sort of the trenches of teaching, hmm. which is the adjunct people, which is people who teach at community colleges, which people who teach on their own privately, and that's a trickier thing. You know, it's yeah. very tricky because you're you're trying to keep and and like I said, you can't keep everybody happy. Right. Um, I, I, I've just figured that it's like my artwork. I can just do what I can do. And so, so do you feel like you've uh, you've been fairly consistent throughout the years, or have you had to really explore to find the right kind of balance of all these things? I think I've been pretty consistent. What um, are you meaning, Trent, by consistent in what area and all? Of the meaning, like, have you had to really like search for? the right ways to approach, the right ways to talk to students, the right balance of uh, environment, the space that you create? Or has it been just minor alterations to kind of how you've I done think, things all along? I think you just get better at it mm -hmm. as you go along. Um, I think that uh, I still um, like to have a smaller group. At Brentwood Arts Center, I have sometimes a more people mm -hmm. and sometimes I feel like I'm trying to give everybody I kind of teach individually in a weird way like people come in like I don't make distinctions between um, ed beginning intermediate advanced hmm. somebody can come in who's painted for 20 years and somebody can come into my class who's never painted at all right and I work with them each individually but that sometimes is when you get a bunch of people who need a lot of help, uh, I can be like a chicken with my head cut off. And so sort uh. of like, it sort of makes it easier, harder on me sometimes. Cause I have friends who teach, who teach in a very methodical way and it always seems easier, but I, I, I you know, you can only, I'm not that, and I'm not that kind of artist. Right. The way I make right. art is let's see where the hell this thing goes. I that's, don't know. That's, let's, yeah, that's interesting. That's a, always, um, that's a, right. You have to kind of, that's what I do. So if I was to say, let's all paint a bowl of fruit and we're all going to, and again, you know, you'd have to figure out the light source and the shadows and mm -hmm. all this stuff. I could get through that, but I think there's people who are better at that than I am. Mm. You know, I fully and you don't admit feel that. compelled. You don't, like, you don't feel really satisfied by that type of teaching or am I no and I don't think I think what I can give them is I think I would be doing them a disservice if I did that kind of teaching I think that what I can give them is a uh, is a kind of 
get, let them get a glimpse of the thrill of making a piece of art that has a life of its own. Hmm. And uh, it's what I'm good at, have you a, know, and I'm not good at everything I else. I have a couple of questions about, like, what, what are your, um, I teach work, workshops, I've been teaching for about 15 years too, but just more, hmm. mm -hmm. either week long or at least, I, I tend to prefer at least a two day, you know, immersion into it. What, right. but I have, where people come with an expectation of wanting to be kind of have an experience, feel kind of a little bit a sense of liberation of looseness, and oftentimes it's people who right. really need that in their own lives or really are, are longing for that in their own lives, and it's hard to kind of you can't really you can do you know it's interesting to try to <laughs> to give that to them, and at the same time. They want it to look really great at the end of the week. They want to really like it. And exactly. And that's very challenging as a teacher, I think. That's very challenging because there's, exactly, because as you know, anybody who's made art knows that it, it, it's, it's sometimes things turn out really well and sometimes they don't. It's it doesn't like, matter. It's like anything. It just, that's not the Well, as long as they, yeah. right. And, and, and I tell people, if you, if you, really immerse yourself in the process, mm. you'll get better art and more pieces you like than if you keep thinking of the outcome. And you'll enjoy but yourself, just, you'll actually feel. And you'll enjoy you'll feel it. feel what it feels like, you'll, you know? Yeah, right, because, um, th right, they, 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 uh, they uh, I think that a lot of people are, are thinking like they're constantly going, this is no oh, good. Right. This sucks. I don't know what I'm doing. Why does it look like this? Why can't, you know, and I'm like, forget about that. Fall into the process. And if, especially if you were doing like a three-day workshop or a week workshop, God, just if people could just immerse themselves yeah. in it and not worry about anything else, but just being it, in it, being there and learning it and being in the moment, it's great. But people have a hard time with that because that's not how they live their oh, lives I, day I get, to day. I get okay. so determined, mm -hmm. and I get like people. We got to lie on the floor. We got to like the physicality of it just to get them, drop them in. You know, oh, I just take it. I, I take like it that. on by the fist. Like let's let's <laughs> do this. And I and I feel like, I, but it, it, especially as as people, the older someone is, I find it. Um, you know, it's. Just, more, more challenging more yeah. difficult hmm. yeah and when you're yeah. teaching is maybe there's a little something too when you're teaching people that are i've always sort of t seemed to teach people that are older than me and there's that thing where you're giving them but you know it's always it sometimes is a bit awkward to teach someone older than you when you feel like they are that's happening less and less these yeah. days with me unfortunately <laughs> how old are you i just turned 40. oh yeah you're yeah you're a kid that's nice to say there you go. No, yeah, it it, but it is true. I mean, um, but uh, that's that's I what if, mostly teaching what people about older. You, what about you days. dropping into your work and what do you ever go? What am I doing? Like, just you yes. can't, you know, like it. What's that like for you? I I uh, I'm making some some work now that I'm that I'm very kind of into and I'm letting it happen in a and I think in a good way but up to that point I after I had my last show a couple of years ago I spent about a year just experimenting with stuff and kind of making things and I was getting a little frustrated a lot of stuff that I didn't think worked mm -hmm. and didn't do what it was supposed to do but I don't I don't do a lot of editing in my studio, I mean, I've talked about this before and I've kind of, I think when I gave this little, I talked about my work last time I had a show a couple of years ago, but um, I edit later. In other words, huh. I'll make something. I, I don't know if it works. I won't show it. Hmm. It won't go out of my studio. And I that way I allow a lot of things just to f ferment and, and and uh, kind of become without laying too much stuff on them. Just let, let it be something. And, and over time, you know, you fall into a group of, of work that look like the direction. And now I'm taking 
that the direction I got, but it was it was for a while there. I was uh, I felt like the show I did was good, and it's like a second act. I I started choking, like yeah. everything didn't seem like mm. you know you always feel like you got to up yourself. Or mm. you just that's how I always feel. Self conscious of what you're making, I think. I don't know. Right, and and I've made a direct effort not to worry about upping myself. In fact, my last show had a lot of giant paintings, like not well, I don't know what he calls giant, but they were. Six by eight, eight by nine feet, you know, big. big. These are big mm -hmm. paintings, yeah. And um, my whole show coming up in January is going to be 24 by 24 inch paintings, the whole show. Mm. I've just decided to make modest scale and put as much invention and punch into these things. Do you normally work in a consistent format for a show? Like No. No. No, I work big and small and all over and the place. Square. I've given myself mm. parameters that I'm going to work... What I am doing is they're shaped. Hmm. So I'm taking a 24 by 24 inch um, square of wood, and I found a wood that's sort of thick, like it's like an inch thick, mm -hmm. but it's very, it's a kind of lumber that has a core in it that's very light. What is it? Mm -hmm. It's called lumber core. It's this weird stuff, but it's great because it, uh, a 24 by 24 inch like three quarter inch piece of plywood weighs like yeah. 15 pounds and this weighs like two pounds hmm it's insane so, so is, does it it's really like yeah I, it's really great stuff so i what i do is i just float that off the wall i put something on the back and float it out mm -hmm. and i cut forms out of this 24 by 24 inch shape and then i use that and i'm painting directly on wood and then i'm using some encaustic and and mostly acrylic paint hmm. and just then I just I, I figure out the shape and then I just go with it and I'm just taking them where they go hmm. and they're just going <laughs> they're going do where you, they do go you, you know spend very much time like do you work on multiple paintings at a time and kind of move around the space and how do you keep yourself loose or I don't work with multiple paintings at a time and I think it's a kind of an obsessive compulsion once I got I'm into a painting I don't work on it all the time, but I, that's the only painting I work on. And I tend to work on it and walk away and work on it and walk away and mm -hmm. go in the house and come out. My studio's at my house, so I go and I go out and sit. I have three dogs, mm -hmm. and I hang with the dogs, and I come in. <laughs> and then if I have a day where I can paint, I go paint some more. Then I go and watch, like, Oprah and eat... <laughs> cookies and then go back out to my studio and work some more but it's this weird way of working where I keep it's like I keep adding and subtracting until I get to this place I want to be and it's just my own way I know there's people who go you know I get up at nine in the morning on my work days and I work till five religiously right. and I'm I can't do that how long is stretch is your huh? average stretch of sitting in front of the painting oh the most probably a couple of hours and then you're off and then I'm the off doing there. If I have time, I go surfing and come back. Right. I don't know. You know, just eat it. That that kind of surprises me that you only work on one at a time, though, because because you. I work. well, here's the thing that the the way I've I've got I paint too, and I don't know how you guys what kind of materials. I know you use both acrylic and oil, right? Mm -hmm. But the acrylic paint dries very fast in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. And I just am adding and subtracting. When I say subtract, I'm instead of I'm not wiping it away, I'm painting over it. So that's like an editing process, just to paint over something. Mm -hmm. And I'm take I'm, I'm taking things out and putting them in, and everything's drying very quickly. So a lot of it is I'll put something down fairly thick, and I'll wait for it to dry. So while it's drying, I go do something, come back 15 minutes later, and work some more. So it's this mm -hmm. sort of I can keep going on the same painting mm -hmm. um, over and over, you know, until I have it where I want it. Mm -hmm. So I just, and I get a little bit obsessed with that one painting. Do, do you know generally how long a single painting takes you to nope. complete? Nope. There's, there's no nope. consistency there. I don't know. Fast, yeah. slow. I don't know. Right. Well, I was curious your thoughts about, I, we, I was talking about this last week, uh, two weeks ago, rented a gallery space, kind of a big space to roll out and work on some really large pieces of rolled out paper, like, mm -hmm. um, 
like 12 yards and I had that usually I can kind of get into my flow and I like to work outside and I can I'm listening to the music and I'm kind of get get in there it's easier for me to drop in something I was trying to reflect on why I was reflecting on why it was I was just had that feeling like what am I doing like I was I didn't know where to begin I, I felt like that beginner all over again of just I'm just maybe that was the space because exactly you were in what we space. said I think it, it was yeah. the sense of it was in my space. I knew that other people, that the people I was renting the space from were going to be coming through the space. I couldn't get, drop that out of, you know, that part out of my head. Yeah, you're, I think the place that you paint, where you paint, has a profound effect on, on the work you make. So every time I've changed studios over my yeah. career, my painting, my paintings change. And... It's interesting to me because a lot of people can paint um, with a lot of people around, and I can too. I mean, I can I could make my work with other people around, but I prefer not to have that. So the idea of mm -hmm. having a studio where people were wandering in and out while I was working constantly, uh -huh. I don't think I would like it. I think it would be somewhat distracting to me. And so that made me mm -hmm. think about about students and I had so much empathy again for just like because it was a space I actually have taught a few workshops in and I thought gosh it's so brave you know first of all just a, an adult to show up and take the time and just and have mm -hmm. to sort of try something new and uncomfortable in front of other people I mean it's really right. commendable to just even yeah it's a lot of people are really really intimidated by art mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's kind of after you've made art a long time, I always tell them, I said, you know, you got to pay taxes. You've got to stop at stoplights, you know, take your med medicine or whatever you need to do with your life. You have to do these things. But when you're making art, you're free. And remember that you're you can you can. This is your world. You know, don't 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 treat it like it's the boogeyman. Uh -huh. hmm. You know, you have to have some. And it is scary. Everybody makes work that they don't, you know, making art is, a, is an odd thing. But I think people, it's the, gen, it's the mad genius factor. Well, if I'm not Picasso or, or I'm not Sargent, why am I making a figure of painting? Well, because you're just you, you know, you're making what, right. what you make, you know. And, that's, the, it's, and that's, that's what's so cool about art is because it's, there's, there's literally nobody who can't make art. Uh -huh. People, some people are better and some people are not as good, but they're everybody. I'm suspicious of, well, I'm not. There are people who are fundamentally talented, but most people, talent is sort of a learned thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there are, there are, there are people like Picasso that were just fundamentally unique individuals. But, um, you know, if you look at the art world, there's a lot of people who are very interesting artists that have just, you know, they're smart people. They worked hard. They came up with some interesting ideas, and that was it. They're not geniuses by mm -hmm. any stretch of the imagination. Hmm. And I could name names, but I'll get in trouble, so I won't. <laughs> I'm asking, I'm not asking you to get in trouble here. No, I could, I could. Don't get me going about the art world, because it's a, it's, a, you, I love it and hate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, you know, people coming to workshops, that's, that's a whole nother conversation is that people coming to workshops to learn about art don't realize that that is a different thing than this quote unquote Being art an world. Yeah. Right? And like there's the, you know, and the, I, I get so many students that like, they feel like they're not going to really be artists until they sell something. So they're in this, oh this God. rush. Give to, me a break. That and is then, selling and making art have nothing to do with each other. They're, yep. they're, it's like, yep. and there's like, it's, it's they, like, like they sell Britney something Spears, in a coffee shop. Spears, and, right. Is a yeah. better, uh, is a better musician because then X playing in a club in downtown Los Angeles right now, because she sells more art. So she's more of an artist. I mean, it's complete horseshit. Yeah. It doesn't, it, uh, you know, there, it has nothing to do with anything. Right. But I do think people so, get tied yeah. to it when they when they feel like it's they're reliant. I mean, they're going. It would be nice to make some money from. That. Absolutely, yeah, and and I, and I try to I do my best to sell my work, and I show my work, and sometimes I sell, and sometimes I don't. But um, 
it's interesting if I'm out in the world um, and I have a show, people will always say, how many did you uh-huh. sell? That would be the first thing. And when I talk to artists, they'll say something sort of vague, like, how did it go? And that can mean, how did you sell? Did people, were people interested? Did anybody write anything? How did it look? Um, mm-hmm. What was the response? You know, all these things, because right. that's how kind of artists talk about. But people out in the world, it's like, look, did you sell it or didn't you? Because if you didn't sell it, what the hell's the point, you know? Right. And, right. It's, and if I took that and point that's of an view, easy I couldn't way. be an artist, because it's, sometimes I sell and sometimes I don't. And it's, I think for people, that's an easy way for them to determine whether or not the work is good. Of course. It, it relieves them from the responsibility of having a personal opinion. Because right. it's have like, it go. well, it, is, it must be good because people are buying it, right? Right. And, and if you're in the art world long enough, you see work that gets sold in the millions of dollars. It's really... Most most people don't. It's not great stuff. And then right. you see stuff that's actually quite interesting that just languishes. So the quality of art is not is not a barometer of how of selling. We um, we are at yeah. about fifty five minutes. I want to I want to wrap wrap this up. But um, one thing that I had wanted to get to and would like to hear your thoughts on a little bit is just how do you think about what is abstraction? Like how do you even think about it? How do you well. Do you I have a story that, or a narrative that kind of keeps you going, or is that no, is not about I, that I, at all? I think that, that abstraction is, like I said, is not objective. So, you know, I think of um, Pollock as an abstract painter, you know, the Pollock drip paintings, mm-hmm. and Picasso is not an abstract painter. You know, and people go, oh, Picasso is abstract. Well, no, it's abstracted. I mean, he abstracts. A figure, he abstracts a still life. These are, these are, fundamental differences. Abstraction is really the absence, of a subject. And so, if you have a painting that's line and texture and form and volume and color and all these things, it can be all, it's all those things without being a picture of something. Mm-hmm. And another analogy I think is interesting is music. And I don't know if it's a good analogy or not, but if you listen to a Bach um, and then you listen to a Bob Dylan song, one is high, one might be highly narrative and it's about something. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know about Dylan, but whatever. But you know what I'm saying. And the other one is a series of notes put next to each other that create a feeling or they create a, a, a they create this this sort of hole that makes you feel some something and it might what it makes you feel and what makes me feel might be two separate things but mm-hmm. it seems to work on some level on a formal level but you can't say a um uh something like a classical like pictures in an exhibition that classical piece or is about maybe to, it's about something. It's not about anything. It's about one note next to the other. So an abstract painting is about one shape or color, line or blob next to another. Sure. Hmm. And I think that that can, can give the feeling of things. It can make you feel like the wind's blowing. It can make you feel like uh, claustrophobic. It can make you feel all these things, but it's not the same as a picture of something. And that's where people, once people let go of it has to look like something, they are free to start moving in interesting directions. But one of the things people do that abstract painters never do Hmm. is abstract painters never say, I see. Do you see that? I see Abraham Lincoln's hat, (laughs) right? They never do that. Abstract painters don't go there because they're not, I'm not looking for that. It might be there, it might not. It hasn't, it doesn't. That's not the goal. Yes, so arbitrary. It's like find, you know, find the, the, the cat or something in there. So... But I think that there's an interesting, just very quickly, I think there's an interesting place that's in between this stuff where a lot of artists use imagery and they throw it in there in an abstract way that's very sort of jarring and sort of collage-like or sort of um, almost like sampling in music. Mm -hmm. So I know there's artists who will put a... um, some sort of part of an image or something that's imagistic and it doesn't necessarily fit and it really, re- they want it to read as abstraction. 
Mm -hmm. So it's, there's, there's a lot of fine areas where these two, but if you get into pure abstraction, Rothko, right. you know, it's light and, and volume and color. That's it. It's right. not, you know, you can see whatever you want to see in it. Right. Do you have any favorite documentaries right. or the, to watch about that you've heard of, that's one of your favorite things uh. to list, watch or listen to or? Conversation. Uh, I haven't. I haven't looked at. I used to look at a lot of them. I mean, oh man, some of the Hollywood movies have actually been pretty good, like Pollock uh -huh. and and the movie about Basquiat. Uh -huh. um, I heard that the Gerhard Richter movie is really good, and mm -hmm. I have not seen it. I heard it's oh, I take super. It back. I have seen. Yeah, that. Richter. It's, it's very good. Yeah, everybody yeah. says that's great. Yeah, it's it's um. I haven't really looked at any films lately. What would that you are... would you call um, Basquiat that uh, abstract painter? No. 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 Nope. Nope. He uses like symbolism and mm -hmm. and all sorts of things. But I I mean, they function like abstraction, where they where their the subject matter is sort of collapsed into a kind of right. something. But I I don't think that. I mean, I'm being fussy about it, but I really think of abstraction as, you know, Ellsworth Kelly as an abstract painter. That's mm -hmm. abstraction. Or what about you know, Cy Twombly? Cy Twombly, mm -hmm. Ellsworth Kelly, William de Kooning when he wasn't making the women, um, um, all Rauschenberg? that. Rauschenberg? No, not Rauschenberg. Well, he did make stuff that was pretty abstract, but he always, he couldn't, he, I think he saw himself as sort of an abstractionist, but he really was. The combine paintings, all those things were really. There were, I mean, if you put a, a, a picture of like JFK or a, or a goat's head, you start making meaning that's very specific. That's, that's you true. Can't, yeah. But so, his, so his sense of color, a, his combines wouldn't just looking at them. Perfectly. Yeah, they function yeah. abstractly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that when I'm teaching, I. I, I Tell people, you know, if you want to go down the Rauschenberg way, that's cool because it opens up all these possibilities of stuff with materials and things. Mm. But it's a huge subject, yeah. and that's why when people, you talk about going to a workshop, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every time I make a painting, I learn something. Yeah. I learn what I don't know or right. something I thought I didn't know or I do know or something. You know, I, it's... The idea that you can know this stuff in a few weeks is insane. Yeah. You know, I think that it's just, and that's why, that's why when people start making art, you encourage them to kind of continue on and not just see it as a, just to keep doing it. You know? Yeah, it's not a weekend experience. No, it's not. It can be. I mean, you can be a weekend painter, but, you know, if they're serious, then they have to, they have to do it enough to find their voice. And that takes time. Yeah. Thank you so much, David. Yeah. Sure. Um, do you, is there anything you want to blabber? Mouth. You want to? Do you have like a, a website or a Twitter account or Instagram? Or I have a website called that's www the house of Lloyd. Two L's L L O Y. Yeah, L L O I D. The house of Lloyd. Because if you do House of Lloyd, you get Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like Iowa, House of Lloyd Christmas decoration. No, this is the House of Lloyd, like the House of Chanel. www. The House of Dior, right? <laughs> the uh, House of Lloyd. .com. The House of Lloyd. Com. If anybody wants to look, and there's a variety of stuff on there. Um, and uh, your gallery? And my gallery is called Clouden Man in Culver City. And K L O W D E N sure Clouden Man in Culver City, and I am. Um, well, I'm actually having a show there of my, um, that's a whole nother thing. My art form covers where I took art form covers and painted on top of them. I don't know. I don't I'm know. showing those tomorrow night. Fantastic. So what, when it, where is that's, that? When that is it? That's tomorrow night at cloud man, uh, in Culver city, six to eight. When does that come down? That'll be up for a month, be up for a month but that's not that this is in the office and it's sort of a little side project thing. Um, but my main um, show of abstract paintings I'm doing are going to be in January at, at Cloud Man, the main gallery. Yeah. Got it. So check that out. And then also you're teaching workshops here on Saturdays. Saturday at... morning, Saturday afternoon. And, so if people um, are interested in that, you... Yeah. 
I don't Do you have know. any open spots, openings for the next Maybe. Round, I don't think so right now, but I'm only doing four and six week blocks. Okay. And so after four weeks, it opens up again. So if anybody's interested in taking anything, they should just get a hold of me and, um, and they can, you know, it'll, something probably will open up. Got it. If they're interested. Um, and you can, you, so you can find uh, some information about that at dabalon.com and uh, you can email me through the website and then I can pass you along to David. Uh, yeah, you unless, can give him my, my website. It's unless the House you, of Lloyd. Oh, that's, uh, at that's a good Gmail. idea. Right, okay. The House of Lloyd at gmail.com. So you can contact him directly via email through the House of Lloyd yeah. at gmail.com. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Delicious. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank uh, perfect. you. Let's go, let's go get liquored up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for this week. Thank you so much, David, for that conversation. And thank you, listening. Thank you for listening. <laughs> you can find show notes for this episode at roomofthetrees.com. And you can support us by subscribing at patreon.com forward slash room. And if you have a moment, it really helps if you would leave a review or rate us on iTunes. Um, We are reading the reviews, and it just really touches us and means so much. Thank you for taking the time. And for this week, just let it be abstract. Let it just unfold and be curious and look for the colors.